All right, good evening, everybody. I got seven o'clock, we'll get started. We're uh, four of seven today. Um, so would everybody please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Cheryl, will you lead us tonight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't think anybody signed up tonight for the open forum, so that'll move us to agenda item number four, approval of the agenda. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Presented, sorry. <laughs> Claudia motion, second. Cheryl seconded, all in favor? Hello. And I, I, I apologize. Jolene Meyer, thank you for being here tonight. Um, yeah, thank you for volunteering and stepping out to the plate to do this. So, um, number five, uh, recognitions. So we'll start with, we going in order, no changes? I don't believe so. Okay. Can we kind of walk us through that? I believe tonight we are starting with our forensics team. I will. Please let Mr. Papa and Mr. Snyder speak to their continued accomplishments. Oh my goodness. You guys can come all the way down in front of the. There we go. There you go. You can speak to however we want to. So I will, we have one large group aware team but within that group there are three that i'll have stepped forward quickly to be um be recognized so if you're a state festival qualifier would you please step forward these we had four uh folks who got to go um and these two went and represented us at state festival I and mean, it's much like a band festival or a choir festival where you um compete basically against a set of standards and yourself and so one two threes and fours we had ones here so they, they represented us well. So good job for them. Okay, now you can take a step back. Uh, let's have our state champ qualifiers step forward. And nice stop. Um, this group competed at the 4A state championship um, on Saturday as well. And we are a very uh, we are not one of the largest teams there. We did not have a full team, and yet we managed to finish eighth overall, which I was very pleased with. Um, we had a great day. We had six events go to semifinals, um, and then we had five advance. Um, Hope Jacobs was our one who was a semifinalist who didn't advance. She wasn't able to join us this evening, um, but they. Um, but if you were a state medalist, would you just give a quick? <coughs> We had uh, several state medalists this year. So Bowden and Dagan um, finished. No, Bowden and Blake. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bowden. Sorry, Bowden and Blake. They just and closed together. Just closed together. <laughs> uh, it's usually I'm saying that all at the same time. Um, Bowden and Layton finished Six. sixth in IDA. Um, thank you. With their <laughs> tried and true methods um, <laughs> and improvised duet acting. Um, Maddox and Carly finished sixth in duet acting. Um, Piper finished fifth. Piper Paddock, who was unable to join us this evening, she finished fourth in um, HSA and third in pros. And Maddox finished, he was a, a, they took seven, and seventh place got a hearty round of applause and a handshake, and not a medal. So Maddox finished seventh in HSA. So it was a great day for us, um, stacked up against some, some really stiff competition. So I'm proud of them. Um, if you qualified for nationals, this is going to get a step back. So good job. Nationals, if you take a step forward. So there are eight of us, and I don't think we're all here. No, no Piper's not here, um, and Carly's not here. So we're going to Louisville, Kentucky, um, at beautiful Louisville at the end of this month. 
and we will be competing against programs from all across the nation. Um, and it's always fun to meet other people to, to, to talk about what their uh, forensics experiences are like in their state and their school versus ours, um, and to meet people from all different walks of life and compete against them. We get to be on the campus of the University of Louisville. So uh, it's a wonderful campus. And as sponsors go, that's a great place to be because we're all contained in one city block or two city blocks, and we don't have to worry about where they are. We can pick a location and we can kind of keep um, we can keep together so much easier that way. So it's a fun location to be. We can check in on each other better. So we're looking forward to traveling and um, hopefully getting some people into final rounds there um, again this year too. So thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. So, Take who comes in. <laughs> and now it's uh, Mrs. Poston is going to speak about the achievements of our high voltage. Yeah, so um, all together this year for solo and ensemble at regionals, there were 16 entries with six ensembles and 10 soloists. Um, everyone who participated got either an excellent oath or superior rating. Many of the students could be here this evening um, due to uh, work and sports and all of that. Um, but those who did participate were Justin Booth, Ella Goodman, Marilyn Hammock, Sam Hazlett, Kara Horton, Maya Kohlmeyer, Sammy Miller, Topher Padgham, Molly Schlifke, and Jada Smith. Another ensemble was Maya Kohlmeyer, Skylar Schoenbeck, and Knox Karnowski. Another group is Addie Kouchman, Kelly Miles, Kylie Rice, Taylor Umscheid, um, as well as a small ensemble of guys, which was Layton Burgess, Bowden Folks, Logan Ingram, Topher Pajam, Sid Schaefer, Gavin Yinkle. Um, Trouble Choir also went as a small ensemble and uh, High Voltage did as well. Um, those who took solos were Hadley Betancourt, Allison Vernon, Kiri Blanton, Paige Dalton, Shelby Coleman, Topher Pajam, Holly Sh Schlitke and Emma Siebert, um, and those who got a superior rating and also went on to the state level of solo and ensemble were high voltage, and soloists were Piper Paddock and Marilyn Hammock. So a lot has been going on um, during this competition season. Um, another festival that the combined choirs entered is State Large Group. At Stage Large Group, there is a required list of music, and there are different levels for different size schools. So um, level one is the easiest two, and then three. Four A schools have to do a, a level two music, but we actually started by doing a level three music and ended up getting a superior rating from each of the judges at that festival. Awesome. Great. Great. Okay, our next group that we're going to recognize, Mr. Richmond, will speak about is our band at the state competition. All right, so uh, on April 15th, we had we had several kids that went to Manhattan and we performed the regional so, uh, ensemble festival there. Uh, this is not everybody. I'm, I'm going to list them all, and I had to write them down because it's a, it's a long list. There was a flute quartet of Josephine Benson, Tucker Padgham, Kelly Garner, and Chloe Learned. A horn quartet of Piper Paddock, Piper Clark, Sid Schaefer, Colby Mansfield, uh, David Benson, uh, Eli Paddock, Carter McCune, these are all soloists. Lily Moss, Piper Clark, Piper Paddock, this solo, Chris Sportsman, Topher Pageant, uh, the brass quintet of Lily Moss, Sam Schimmelhorn, Piper Paddock, uh, Noah Gray, and Jeremy Height, a flute trio of uh, Josephine Benson, uh, Gwen Hutchinson, and Topher, and a uh, flute solo from Chloe Learned. They, they performed in Manhattan for regional on April 15th. If they received a one at that festival, then they qualified to go to state, which was at Andover Central. Finally, at Andover Central, uh, this year, uh, not, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before. And uh, the, the folks that, that went there, um, if you went, if you went there, if you went, if you went to Andover, step forward. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
so it was, uh, it was the flute quartet, the horn quartet. David Benson did his sax solo. He had Eli Paddock play Verona solo. Lily Moss trumpet solo. Piper Clark horn solo. Uh, Chris Sportsman did the clinic solo. Topher did a flute solo. Uh, the brass quintet uh, played as well as the flute trio. And they did a fantastic job while we're down there. So thank you. Thank you. Large group? Oh, yeah, I can I, I can talk about that. Uh, we, we went to Beloit, nice fine two and a half hour drive to Beloit, um, <laughs> and uh, warmed up in a, in, in, a, in a wrestling room with a ceiling a little bit lower than this. It smelled exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we, we, we played there, played for three judges. Um, we were uh, only one of the five bands that got ones there all day, and we, we were only the second band that got straight ones from all from all three judges. They played really, really, really well. It was a good day. All right, thank you. Our next group, Mr. Judah will talk about is FBLA, and we had uh, one of people make. Yes. 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 Yeah. So it's been a really big year for FBLA <laughs> competition wise. Uh, we had 50 students completed uh, competed districts, which was held right here, and then a small group of us went to Harrington. From that, we had 40 people compete at state, uh, which was awesome, maybe our biggest group ever. Um, out of that, 11 of our uh, participants got in the top 10. All right, so uh, huge, huge year for us. I'll focus just on these guys that were able to make it tonight. Uh, Ray Grant over here, he um, got 10th in advertising. So in FBLA, there's two types of competitions. You can either do a competency-based test or a performance. Um, these guys were in the competency-based test, which is basically it's a 70-question test, um, and then you're rated based off of how well you do against other uh, against your peers. The other one is competition where like public speaking, job interview. So uh, Ray took the advertising test and he got 10th place and that was out of 171 of the top business students in the state. Wow. So that was a huge accomplishment uh, for him. Layton here um, got top 10 in three different competency tests, which yes, that was the only one. <laughs> very big deal, very big deal. He got top 10 in computer problem solving Cybersecurity and networking uh, infrastructure. All right. Bowden uh, got top 10 in two of his tests. That was computer problem solving and networking infrastructure. And then Dagan, top two, our top 10 in two of his second in economics, which had 112 people competing, and third in political science, which had 119 people competing in it. So huge day for us. Uh, um, as Mr. Strum said, we'll have four people that we were able to get qualified for nationals. Um, that would be these first three here, and then Hope Jacobs, who got second in public speaking um, and state as well, is going to be going. So, really huge year for FBLA. We're, we're super proud of these guys' performances. Four nationals. Oh, nationals in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Yeah. So, that is at the end of June. We didn't schedule that. So, big trip for them, no doubt. Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Tonight, uh, Mrs. Steinbacher will be talking about uh, our proponents at FCCLA um, and on those boards go with what they were doing. Good evening. This is our FCCLA representatives for us this evening. Um, we took five people to state leadership conference in April, and they all performed with making the boards are called LEOs or leadership education opportunities. They worked together on um, creating a project. I uh, believe these two did theirs on their career and how FCCLA has affected their life and their future. And he has um, represented what we've done in um, FCCLA to help educate educate people about what FCCLA is about. So that's what the, the Leos are. Um, they take those down to the conference. Uh, we do sessions uh, for leadership, learning different things through FCCLA. And um, it's with people all over the state. They did really well. 
um, Michaela and Zay's groups. Oh, let's see, it's, Michaela was on her own, and then Zay and Eddie, right? Eddie Hargrove um, had one of the boards, and both of them received reds, top uh, ratings. And um, Zoe Lorder <laughs> had um, second place in a, a white ribbon in hers, and then um, Sheldon and Cook placed fourth with a purple ribbon or gray ribbon, I guess, uh, for hit. So we were very proud and very pleased with what they did. It is a state level only, so they do not advance on to national for that. Um, our hopes is that next year, now that they've got some, we've got a young group in there this year, Michaela was our, our um, elder of the group. And so and we're hoping with our young group next year that we have more that will compete with um, the uh, star events so that they can qualify the move on to nationals. And I also have two that are talking about uh, possibly moving on eventually for junior and senior year to do district office um, positions. So we're working on it. It's getting there. But we're proud of them. They did a great job. Yeah. Um, item number six is the uh, administrator and director reports again. Um, thank you, everybody, for the time that you put into that. Um, the, I, I do read them. I um, can't speak for everybody, but uh, it, it definitely spurs some conversation um, with the superintendent. But I, I appreciate those. Um, I'm going to miss them this summer. <laughs> I'm going to miss reading the handbooks again. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that'll bring us into the consent agenda. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I second. Carol's uh, motion, Claudia seconded. All in favor? 4 0. Yeah, that's right. All right, uh, number nine, bear construction storage yard proposal. Peter Clark um, is here. I think, yeah, there he is. Peter Clark is here and uh, from Bayer Construction. And we've been talking oh, for a little bit here about uh, their project with the city on these four side streets. I don't want to name them because I'll get them wrong, but <laughs> I, I imagine he will and, and has a proposal about using some of our property. If you want to drive, so I'll let you. I'll let you kind of get started, Peter. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and take the, the control there. I'll pull up here. Advance it when it's convenient. I can't find it. I want to say thank you first to the board for letting me be here. Mr. Kim for allowing me to come and give a presentation. Uh, my name is Peter Clark, Fire Construction. I'm a Lamigo resident here in the area. I have uh, six kids. My wife also uh, on a clock works here with the school district. Um, I have a kid in every single one of the schools here. <laughs> so, You're in good company. Not just in, in taxes, but in the, you know, what's actually going on in each of the schools. So we're, we're pretty proud to be part of the league. Uh, and we're very happy that we were able to be a part of the project for the street reconstruction that's going to be going on for the next four years. So we, I'll get into some of the details with that. So as you may be aware, they're replacing 25 blocks of City Street from 8th Street down to 4th Street, from uh, Walnut to Vine. So Walnut, Chestnut, Spruce, and Vine. All of 5th, all of 6th, all of 7th Street, all being replaced. It's entirely new sewer lines, entirely new water line, entirely new storm sewer, which doesn't exist right now. There's no storm sewer. It just runs down the street, down the street. And all new concrete streets and sidewalks. Also, I'm going to talk a lot about the trees. I know that's a whole other subject we can get into, but uh, it's, going to be, it's going to take four years. We're going to start here in August, uh, starting primarily on Vine Street. And it's going to take like I said, four years to get through all the different phases of the project. Uh, 
the project's going to require a lot of materials. And part of how we were able to come up with a competitive price, you know, try to find the best price for the city was to pre-purchase our materials up front because of inflation. If we were to buy materials over four years, there would be a considerable amount of escalation in the material prices. And having them all together and got purchased up front would work very well and have a lower price. But the caveat is they make you actually take the materials and have them in on your home. They, they will hold on to them for four years after you buy. So that brings us to one of our needs, which is that we need to have a location to store some of these materials we're talking about. Uh, like I said in the previous slide, uh, eight inch water, eight inch sewer pipes, about 7,000 foot of each of those uh, stacked up. It takes up a little bit of space, not tremendously, but uh, between that and some storage containers to the store all the little pieces and parts that, can, that connect the pipes together, uh, we need a little bit of space. So what we've proposed is to segment off a portion of the green space that is just accurate to the east of the PLC building, approximately 180 by 150 area that we would put up a fence right there and put down a crushed rock surface <coughs> so that it would be durable and wouldn't create mud that attract on the machines. And then we would put up two covered structures on the north end for being able to put the, the plastic pipe underneath. Plastic pipe, uh, requires that it is not exposed to the sun or have direct sun exposure while it's being stored because the plastic it actually will uh, degrade over time and have UV exposure, so it has to have a, some sort of covering over it. So, what we propose as part of that setup is that we have two of these uh, <coughs> coverings that require a connex on each side. Uh, we use a total of three connexes with two groups uh, connecting the three. Uh, they make, cover about a 40 by 40 square foot area. Uh, would be sufficient to be able to store all the pipe underneath and be protected. Additionally, we'd like to encompass the whole site, that 180 by 150 site with a six foot uh, fence for security and, and privacy uh, purposes, and put a construction screen on that fence that would uh, help to screen out you know, the, the industrial sense of you know, having materials stored there. Uh, and allow us also to put up some logos of the city of Domingo, fire construction, and potentially some uh, advertising for the school. That's what we desire. So we can promote the, the football team, basketball team, volleyball teams, wrestling, whatever we could do to, to help to enhance the team on the space. Obviously, we require some maintenance over time. We put down our uh, aggregate surface, rock surface. Uh, requires some regular mowing and weeding around the edges to make sure that it was in, kept in a neat and orderly manner. Uh, obviously, the materials come in packaging, so we have to do a daily policing and cleanup of packaging and materials so it wasn't creating a nuisance from uh, the area and it'd be unsightly. And of course, it'd have a gate that we would lock on a nightly basis uh, so that it would stay secure. In addition to that, the, the connexes would also, also have locks on them so that. And who was extremely desirous to climb over a fence would not be able to get into the connexes. And if they want to carry an eight foot, or actually a 16 foot, eight inch pipe on the shoulder and climb over the fence, get more power to more power to them. <laughs> Probably not likely going to happen, but uh, that's something that I'm not terribly concerned about. Another option we thought about that I wanted to make sure you're aware of is if you had a desire for that particular area to be used as a future parking lot, what we could do is grade that lot before we put down the aggregate base so that when we're done, it could be used in the future as a parking lot or be ready for receiving paving if that was desired. That's an option I wanted to be aware of that uh, an, an add we could do to what we're doing at li relatively little cost to us that could add a benefit to the long term. However, I do not know what the school district's long term plans are for that particular site. So that's just something to keep your head talking about. So when Mr. McKim and I were talking about this proposal, obviously we're asking for a benefit for fire construction as we try to accomplish this project for the good of the community, but you know, there's probably should be some sort of uh, compensation to the school issue for this effort. And contemplating some of the needs of the school issue, we know that there is a need for some work to be done at the stadium parking lot. So I put together a package of what we would consider as a uh, a competitive opportunity 
to provide a benefit to the school district with the resources we have. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple different options we can do with that with the stadium parking lot. We know that in this current situation, the stadium parking lot has a, a primarily a, a millings and aggregate service, so it's not paid, right? And it has a relatively steep slopes as you enter into and come out of the uh, east side of the parking lot onto Columbia. And those steeper slopes uh, cause that the runoff that comes off of the stadium parking area, it kind of goes fast toward that end and it carries the, the rock particles down onto the shoulder of the Columbian and then down into the, uh, into the ditches along the Columbian, which are filling up with that material, which causes <laughs> some concern to the city maintenance long term. Long term, there could be some regrading done at the parking lot that would flatten things out and eliminate the amount of uh, material that is being scoured off of the parking lot. The, the flatter the, that the hill is, the less velocity the water will run with and the less material will be washed away. So we're aware that there's a, in some design work done to identify about 30,000 cubic yards of material that can be cut down on the site. Uh, what we would propose is that uh, you, it's agreeable, you can work towards cutting that 30,000 cubic yards and creating the fill site just adjacent to the west side of the state approximately two and a half acres. Uh, that would provide a more another two and a half acres of usable property adjacent to the stadium and also just south of the current uh, practice fields that can be used for more activities, uh, athletic or other ones. That dirt just makes it just move from one site to the other to make that fit, to provide that benefit. You'll probably never find dirt more accessible and more convenient to make that kind of a uh, fill and have that space available and than what you have in that opportunity right there. That being said, I know there are some potentially some strings attached to that property where that still site I show you is located. So we have come up with another option that you could consider. But the first part of that, the details of this proposal number one are that we would clear the trees in the fill area, prepare for the fill, we would cut and haul the dirt and place it in the fill area with compaction testing to make sure that it was filled properly and would not consolidate over time. We would cover the parking area that uh, in the park in the existing stadium the asphalt millings six inches deep on a flatter slope so they would not wash away. Seed and mulch and provide erosion control for the fill area so that it would be stable and usable long term. Uh, provide all the grading design by buyer construction in-house so that we give you a turnkey project to be able to uh, have it be completed. Total cost to do that would be about $12.50 a cubic yard to perform that. And that is with a discount for allowing us to be able to use the storage area here adjacent to the PLC. Another small caveat to that is if you wanted to perform any concrete paving on the site, we could perform that at approximately $60 a square yard. And the reason I mentioned that, um, if you were to grade the site so that there was kind of a low point down the center of the parking area, one of the best practices is to create that, and that low point is, is to have actually have about a 20 foot wide concrete pad. That would be the length of the parking area, which is about 500 feet. Comes out to probably around a thousand square yards. That way, and all the water that would drain from this direction toward the low point or from the west area down to the low point would collect onto that concrete surface and then drain out to, to the ditch. And that would ensure that you know, the material stays on site and not wash down into the ditches. So that is that is an option to be considered that we don't provide. Option or proposal number two is doing the same grading that we talked about you're cutting down the stadium parking lot, cutting about 30,000 cubic yards. But instead of creating a fill area, we would export that dirt off site. And still cover the parking area with asphalt milling, six inches deep. Uh, provide the grading design in house. So we have a turnkey project included with this. That total cost about $9 per cubic yard. So pretty good savings there. And again, if you desire to have that concrete paving as part of that, that's an option that we can provide. 
And lastly, for your consideration, if, if all these options are something that you are interested in, but not sure if you want to pull the trigger and you're looking at, can, if you didn't do anything with the stadium, what could you provide to us as a school board by our construction or the use of the lot? I like to propose that for number three, that we provide a cash rent of using the property for those four years of fifteen thousand dollars to allow us to use that space and return it back to you when, when done in its original condition it's a grassy usable area for uh, soccer game you know, soccer practices and football practices as we're doing it for this day that is another option that we would let you guys consider so that is those are the three options like for you guys to consider and discuss. I'm prepared to ask you or any questions you may have about uh, what we put together. So on your proposal, piece, taking that green stuff out, what happens to the two shop that brings that it goes up? Is that your goal? Because the business price increase Count for replacing those. If you look there to the west, top northwest corner of where the red is, that's where current shop that exists. I would, my, my, quick, my quick answer to that is the exact limits of the grading, I'm not sure of what that is. I do know from having driven that area quite a bit that there's a pretty good knob of dirt above the shop that rings. Right. Um, the grading may not necessarily have to impact those, but if they did, they, those would be put back the way they were. And that, that would be included as part of the overall package. Anything we disturb to get in place uh, as part of that, as part of that compensation. And I'm assuming that you would carry liability for this lot over here, liability insurance? Yes. Okay. Is there any way that during a school day that the trucks could not go until what, 8.30? Yeah. 8.30 or 9. I mean, I don't want to mess your schedule up, but boy, that is just a mess right there at that intersection, so. I think that's worth consideration. Yeah, and then, talking about. There's things that we can do as we begin our day. Typically our crews begin work around at 7, 7.30, but we know we're going to be working right in the middle of the neighborhood. And we're going to have to take into consideration pedestrian traffic yeah. and everyone in their homes, you know, and what they do at seven o'clock in the morning. Right. So yes, we will be making some accommodations to make sure that you know, we may have crews who are present who are in the job site doing certain things, preparing for the day, but uh, not having you know, heavy equipment driving up and down H Street. Right. And, and something we can do. Okay. Thank you. I know. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. And, and just to just to make sure, I know you covered it, but um, you, your company, you'll have people to maintain the fence. And I know you talked about the weeding, but that'll be all on you guys weed eating the fences. And yep. right. okay, anything that is adjacent to you included inside that fence, and we would continue. We would maintain your duration. Okay. So. Um. And we talk, so he knows these questions are coming. Just, just, <laughs> so he, he's very, very kind to actually give me the question. <laughs> uh, we like our kids to do well, so that that's just, um, if we in our proposal for Molson, they talked about eighty three and Road Rock to cover that. Where in Terry, talk to me a little bit about that and how that would change our pricing potentially. By by construction, half of our company is construction, the other half is aggregate production. We, we own, operate six quarries in the region. Um, so we're aware, well aware of the costs of aggregates and also milling. Because I can tell you that the price for AB3, which is a, a certain gradation of crushed rock uh, out of Ebert Port, which is the closest quarry to us right now is just the material without any of the shipping or the cost of placing is $14 and 65 cents a ton. And you would need a lot of it to cover that size six inches thick. The, there is a substantial, it's, it's not exactly half cost to do millings, but it's probably about 60% of the cost to use millings for the same purpose versus the 83. And I would add that asphalt millings, you're looking at it from a just the usability standpoint, asphalt millings have less dust 
and they have basically the same amount of fine material, you know, the small particles as AB3 does. AB3 is primarily small particles with a little bit of big stuff inside to give it some structure. But the amount of material that would wash away is practically the same amount whether you put asphalt in the lens or AB3. If it's not paved, if it's if it's one or the other, you're gonna you're gonna have about the same amount of stuff that's gonna wash if you don't change the grades on the front to keep everything flat and keep everything in place. So he's gonna, is they're not okay with our millings right now. Correct. And I, I would say it's not that the, the millings themselves inherently are bad, it's how they're placed on a steep slope. The, the grade of the parking lot is what's causing the problem, not the millings themselves. As I said, we worked with Olson to kind of set up some of this project before you work with Olson and Kane, you work with them to have be on this project. Yeah, Olson is the engineering firm that designed the Lamigo Street Reconstruction Project. So we've been working with them hand in hand, and we have historically worked with them quite often on various projects throughout the Plymouth region. Uh, Olson's had a presence you know, in Manhattan for a couple of decades now. Last question on my list. I, I don't know how turn. I don't know how ready we are for this project. So it's a four-year lease or four-year use of our, our property. Um, there's three different proposals. Do we need to decide right now what proposal we want to use, or can we do that at any point during that four-year time frame? I think if we're agreeing that. We would like to do a partnership then that's really what we need to know is yes you're agreeable to have a partnership and let us use the site and what exactly is done of the three options i'd like to do that we're open to anybody. any of the three to us are viable options now or i'd say public lease for the next two years otherwise the pricing you know the cost of of the work might change a little bit primarily because the costs i'm describing mostly are uh, you know, equipment and labor costs to actually move the dirt. And those costs, as you know, will be affected by inflation in the next couple of years. So I would have to, if we were to talk again and say in 2026, we say it's time to do the work and we had to come to an agreement before that point, we would probably have to look at a little bit of escalation in the costs. Now, we agreed, if we agreed now, I'd still do it in 2026 at the price I quoted. If we said, let's do it and let's do it. So do we have to wait until 2026 to get the football parking lot done, or can we do it before that? You could do it at any time. If you, if you said, Peter Clark, you want buyer to proceed, and we agree might even do it this summer, I'd have resources to have done this summer. And you said the reduced cost was $12.50 a cubic yard um, for proposal one, or yeah, proposal one. So how much is that reduced from? Well, about and what we, what we perceive the value of right. renting the property is about fifteen thousand. So, if you look at it from a percentage standpoint of how much it was reduced, it's not reduced a dramatic percent. Uh, mostly, it's our ability to put together a, a competitive package right. and a team that can perform the work when you need it, and being willing to be at your at your beck and call to a degree and do it when you want to. So I think where we're at now is um, I, I, I want to, we don't have a lot of equipment operators on staff here at USD 320. It's a need that we, uh, it's definitely a need that we have talked about. Um, but realistically, I think we're at a point right now um, for Mr. McKim to continue communications, make sure that everything is legal and right, and then bring it back to the board and decide on an option going forward. Um, I, I mean, I would say probably if not next meeting, the next meeting, the fall, you know, so not June, maybe July at the latest, we could probably have something. Um, but I think it is, it's, I, I think it's a, a very good partnership. Um, the only thing that really, and, and this is not really a, a non-issue, but the thing is, you know, when I was reading through this deck, I was like, ah, we might want to stay away from, depending on what we're going to put up there, because we don't want a 
false sense, you know, like, hey, we're getting a new high school now just because it says when we go high school on a fence doesn't mean we're getting it. But I think that there's, I think that there's other ways that we can, um, you know, depending on when you start, we're going to have a lot of traffic here um, come the 4th of July. Uh, we can get a fence up and start really selling, you know, like you had said, the school district as a whole um, and the city of Wamigo um, and your company. I think that would be great. So um, unless anybody has anything else. I guess I do want to, for, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, we are starting to receive shipment of those new materials. Mm -hmm. And the more, I guess, the longer the decision making process goes, and I'm not saying that I don't want to put pressure in right now, it's not a pressure sales pitch, but we're going to receive a lot of materials over the next couple of weeks. And the more materials we have to receive now, we're going to find places to put that in different cubby holes around where we have access. The less beneficial it is to actually have the yard because we'll have already taken shipment and we don't want to have to move them multiple times. So every time we move the material, there's a cost to it. Uh, I have another option that we can look at here in the go that, uh, that we, I might, we can go to. It's my preferred option because this is the best site relative to where we're doing work. Uh, the other locations on the other side of Lincoln Street, closer to the railroad tracks, that we could have access. But I think if, if we're going to have a decision that's going to take another month or two months, I'm probably going to have to take another option okay. to start a single Just because I, the, the vendors are all giving me some, some deadlines when it has to be shipped off. Okay. So, I'm going to motion to agree that we're going to do something. We don't have to choose on the proposal. Exactly. Which one? What we were doing with it exactly? Just exactly. I don't think we have to decide the exactness today. We just have to agree yeah. to partnership. Yeah. Or, um, or even enter some private language. I want to make sure that we would have in mm -hmm. there so have a lawyer look at it. But, but and that's what you got. In this we could work. Yeah. Uh, if I, I guess if I have the ports, which uh, is the way permission to yeah. first to take that yeah. up and bring it back. Them, them, I think a little bit of a yeah, we'll work something out. Um, yeah. or, or try to work something out. I guess my only question I think it all makes sense, everything's pretty clear. But since Deb, Tara, and Bruce aren't here, um, did any of them raise any questions with you, Rob? Or was I did not. Uh, the questions that we got were whatever, what are we you, currently you gave using us that the, for? the um, little heads up on it. I didn't know if any of them had. Prior to the meeting, traffic is 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 going to be something that is a is a big deal. I mean, seven thirty to eight fifteen. That's it's yeah. pretty crowded. And again, from two fifty to three thirty, it's pretty crowded again. So, um, you know, the other, the other times are probably okay, but you know, those are pretty important. The other thing that I don't think any of us around the table have been here long enough to know that west of the stadium where you're talking about the fill area, there's some restrictions and limitations on that. And I don't think any so of I'm, us- So I'm chasing that. Yeah, yeah, so we're chasing that. So we couldn't make that decision, the, the no, exact decision know. today anyway. Yeah. yeah. The, they don't need a proposal decision tonight. They need to know whether we're gonna work with that or tonight. Uh, or in the next day or so. If they're all agreeable and there's something that you feel comfortable that we could start storing materials, knowing that we would work out which of the options is your preferred option and all the verbiage that goes in the agreement. I think we can work together. Well, then I'm going to say, Mr. President, I make a motion to charge the superintendent with working out a contract with Bayer Construction for legal review and bring it back to the board. No? Second. Yes, second. Yes, sir. Is that how you do we want to do we just want to put a period after bare construction on this right up just give you the ability i i don't have a problem with it being there as long as it's secure as long as kids can't get in there is you know we're not using it the, my biggest concern that i brought up um which is important was like the kitty help me out kitty barnard yes Thank you. So, so as that. long as that can be done down here, and I know Mr. Morton has a big play in that as well, and we can get people down here and everything. Minus. And when we are reviewing our playground, which will be in the next four years. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I think I think potentially. Great. 
can we just leave it as a motion of after that construction period? Okay. And then that gives you the ability. We're not talking about a, a massive amount of funds. We're talking about our ground. Yeah. And and then and then and, and then it is. It's we, we we figure it out from there. We when we get into options, we've got time to do that. We'll figure it out. But I think he can work through the legal stuff that needs to go between to start the partnership to be able to start storing stuff probably pretty quickly. I think. So, so wait, who's seconded? I gotta read. Don't leave it. I gotta, it. I gotta, I gotta read read it. It. You have to rescind. Rescind it. Oh, so good. Jolene needs to rescind her second. Come on, Jolene. They won on the job. <laughs> <laughs> I rescind it. Okay. And I rescind. Okay. So now go forward. Okay, Mr. President, I make a motion to charge the superintendent with working out a contract with Bayer Construction. Period. <laughs> I second. All right. All in favor? Oro, uh, Claudia, and Jolene Oro. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Consider this. Yeah. And we will get started on our new design. Yeah. Thank you so much. I just thought that I was so excited. I'm with you. No, it's <laughs> so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> Human management <laughs> apps. And books. And books, yes. You're welcome for the additional reading this weekend. Yeah. And uh, does anybody have any uh, questions? I guess uh, the so. We are continuing to scour our handbook for areas where we don't necessarily agree, knowing that each building is unique to itself. And so there's some things that are we do essential that the high school doesn't do, and vice versa. Uh, but we're an example would be transportation. We're trying to line up transportation. That's pretty similar as far as uh, the process. If a student doesn't behave appropriately on the bus, that should be the same in all of our handbooks and then um, also in the transportation. So we're continuing to try and line that up if we can. Uh, I would love to say it's spot on perfect. I'm not 100 sure it is, but we'll end quick looking policy into that too. Um, so there's a lot of them and I appreciate the work that was done by all of them as they continue to scour those. Hopefully you saw the, the changes and, and, and we'll so you, you didn't necessarily have to read through every point and wonder what we changed. Um, questions on those handbooks? So I've, I've got a comment, um, mainly for here, but the biggest problem that I was having when I was going through, and, and this is probably the army side of me, is it's very hard, Not nothing aligns. So each individual facility or activity or school I think has a very good handbook, but where you decide to put dress code policy is somewhere else or over here not existent. <laughs> okay. So we went through to do it together. <laughs> well, and then and then the other problem is I think that the district side of the house should be the overall governing, and then it matches. So if right. your dress code is section two then that should probably be in the district and then everybody kind of aligns off of that. And then the other thing is, is that I, it, it's not a stress on me, but things that I have experienced is, for instance, at the middle school, you have a dress code policy, but then the different sports have different things that they're required to do. Instead of waiting for a parent meeting before it happens, if we put that in the handbook and it's not going to change, like, I'm all about the boys' basketball team dressing up and put on tie to go to the game. But is that the first time the parents hearing about it when they go to a week before a parents' meeting? And I think if we're not going to change that, that's great, wonderful. Let's put it in there as a subsection. Maybe we break it into the, you know, start to really combine that athletic side of it with the building because it is intertwined. And I want to try and get everything together so there's not different policies and handbooks that go through. But I definitely appreciate your work. I spend most of my time on the change documents to everybody's, um, but I think as we get closer, maybe by this meeting next year, we have a standard, you know, practice where the transportation is always section 17, and maybe you don't have, you know, in one of the books it's omitted because it doesn't matter. Uh, but we know that if we're talking about a transportation question, it's always section 17 or whatever. This doesn't make sense. But 
but I think that that would be um, cut and paste work. Hopefully, would be the biggest problem with that moving it into those prescribed sections. But I definitely appreciate everybody's work on those as we try and get to a more. I just want to get away from the, the silos, right, and have it more uniform. So appreciate the work with that. Maybe some student in high school who gets in a lot of trouble can have to go cut and paste that. There you go. <laughs> exactly right. It's like a meat. Yes. Not, not sure we want that student to make a handbook. You are in trouble now. Yeah. <laughs> Just cut the haze. All they have permission to do. <laughs> All right. Um, did anybody have an issue that needed to talk about, or could we approve all of them? No issues? No issues. Okay. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve all handbooks as presented. You want a second group? <laughs> I won't second. make you rescind this one. <laughs> Cheryl motion, Jolene second, all in favor? 4 0. Uh, number 11, the fees. Um, I think just some housekeeping and probably inflation, right? Yeah, and there really were all issues there. Really, if you look closely, there really were a lot of additional fees. Um, there were Looked like a bunch of different fees. Those were classes that we broke up. So it was drawing and painting were one class and they had multiple levels within that one class. And then we created multiple drawings and multiple paintings. And it went up about $10 in that class. Those are some of the things that we're encountering as, as the world is encountering it. Things like art supplies have gone up and, and pretty substantially. So um, the other part was, um, Athletics, the league has raised fees. We haven't raised the activity pass. Jobs, when was the last time you? It, it's been that since I started in 2010. So I don't know how long. What's that? Yeah, activity, uh, activity pass. Activity pass has been that way for us. Yeah. So um, we just thought we would increase that $10. That helps our budget out a little bit as we're continuing to need to buy things out of out of that budget as well. Um, you'll notice that food service is not on there. Milk and it, it will be eventually, but uh, we're waiting for the feds to, to provide their feedback and uh, both on milk prices and on where we should be for a cost on that. So. What's the uh, what's the two, what the two main or two schools do for students that are um, on a free and reduced meal plan when it comes to fees to give them the opportunity? Where does that get? Is it just waived or is it picked up by something else or how does that work? For the after activities, no. We typically have like uh, people will step in and say, hey, we've got to do if there isn't, yeah. there's a separate thing. Can I the same for art? I mean, surely we're not going to stop a student from taking an art class because of these. So you guys have always done this. You've always figured it out. We do have we donation have funds thing. also that are specifically for um, kids who are, whose families are struggling financially. Okay. We had some really big donations for that okay i thought we had so thank you just wanted to make that clear all right well mr president i make a motion to approve the 2023 2024 fees as presented um, second claudia in motion cheryl second all in favor four oh yeah Capital outlay plan. So we have been working on putting this together. And uh, which one did you want? Go with the, the larger one. Large projects? No. Sorry, the, the, the master sheet. 
And this is something I'll send out to you and um, so you can kind of keep track of, of what we have there. I might steal your pointer. Yeah, it's got a, a laser thing on it. Lasers. I probably probably shined it at that guy in the face. All right. So uh, if you go over to the master sheet first over there on the on the bottom, of course the tabs are on the bottom. So when I send this to you, you can you can uh, move around in this. Uh, color coordinated as best we can. Um, this area over here, that's not going to work. Anyway, the red is previous years. We talked about that. 22-23 is column G. So that's current expenditures. And then as we move across, those are projected expenditures. So what we have in the plan right now, is it 100% done? No, but if, if we're a lot closer than we were three months ago, um, it's going to come if we turn that light off that we turned on for the kids, they'll be able to see the screen. Those two, so that, no, by the, no, by the by flag, 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 because it makes the screen thank you, flag. better. Perfect. There you go. Oh, yeah. that, that works. Um, so then, how do we how do we get these numbers down here? Well, if you go to mechanical systems, right there, clicks on that, then you can see you know, twenty two, twenty three. You just go right down this line. This is what we've expended. Remember, green is not hitting cap outlay, but it does allow us to keep track of kind of those year over year expenses. Um, and so if you go up to high school, you'll notice that we, that's where we spent $280,000 on our hot water boiler heaters. So it, then that just pulls across and goes into our master sheet. Um, back to the master. No, okay. no. And so then the next year, we're, so we're pretty well, pretty well done with twenty two, twenty three, and and the the things that we have expended and will expend. There is one exception that's transportation because we're looking, but twenty three, twenty four. So those are the projects that we have kind of in mind, or those are first on our list for twenty three, twenty four. So the ones that are made that list unless you go out to the side and like we'll wait till failure um which is an okay thing in that situation they may not want we'll have to ship ice in for a couple of days if the central elementary ice machine fails but um if you go down to west for instance um so the heating boiler replacements there at one hundred eighty thousand dollars that's an approximate cost trench working on getting some final costs on those kind of things but we are concerned that those will go out very similar to what the high school did on us this year. We would prefer not to be in the middle of heat season. And so that is on the list to replace this year. They're all possible. So that's kind of the idea for each of those that we've kind of worked through. Um, if we do have a situation where, for instance, we'll wait until failure, we'll leave it there. If we can, we'll move it across to the next year. And that will be money that just doesn't come out of cap outlay for that. And we'll just be able to slide that across. Um, buildings and grounds. If you click on buildings and grounds, same idea. Uh, those are expenditures that we have. One thing you'll notice if you go to Central Elementary, and I'm not nailing all of this, but if you go to Central Elementary, the down a little bit farther. So rainproof the North Gym Wall. That was something Olson talked about with us, um, and I I heard the board say that's probably first on our list to, to start knocking off. So we put that in there. Um, you go across to transportation. I said one of them. We still have maybe some expenditures to go potentially. So we are, if you remember, we have the, the smaller bus that was in an accident. We're trying to find that, um, not the second one that was in the accident, the first one that was in the accident. So we're trying to find its replacement. 
And then when we added the three, four different activities, we knew there's a good chance we need more transportation of the smaller variety. So they don't make the 10 passenger vans anymore. So it, the next level would be like a suburban type uh, vehicle. So we were looking for something along those lines. Uh, if we're not able to find those, again, we'll slide them over to 23.4 and continue to look for uh, the right vehicle for us. That was it. If you go back over to the master sheet, And you cross the top, and then we'll try to. So I used eight mils, and I used the number that we brought in this year from those eight mils, and just put it all the way across the top there. If you go seven mils, as we're starting that conversation this summer, we'll, we'll be able to play with that number, change the number if need be, and then um, we'll know what your projected balance might be. Be, you, know, you, you change that around a little bit. Knowing that uh, you can see in 26, 27, we have some pretty big expenditures come in and start dipping us down into a concerning number. I think if you get too far under a million dollars, which seems like a lot of money to me, but too far under a million dollars, one emergency can dip you to zero pretty fast. That would be uh, something you need to be aware of. So that's what we'll track. And you can kind of see we we just said you go down just a little bit, Catherine. We used two hundred thousand dollars as kind of a, a placeholder for salaries that can come out of cap outlay. We try to get those out of there if at all possible. But as you can see over the last, go ahead and go back down. As over the last four years, the expenditures, there's 200, 0, 0, 166. So those are the expenditures that we have needed to use in those situations. So the um, mills do not show any increase in valuation. Uh, right. I use that as eight mil. This would probably be the lowest number. Uh, I'd rather go with the highest expense and the lowest profit. And then they, that also gives us just a little bit of cushion. We'll change that on a yearly basis as, as that grows. You don't think the county will lessen our home environment? Well, they didn't mind. Maybe they didn't hear <laughs> They didn't mind. They didn't mind. Um, so <clears throat> now also to remember, like for cap outlay and for LOB, the state, what's the right? Well, we get a certain percent of money from the state. So they equalize that. In, in our bond and interest, we equalize, but it's like it somewhere between eight and 15% for us. This is about 55%. So the money's, we are helped out by the state a little bit more in our cap outlay and in our LOE. So. Rob, I apologize, I didn't look fast enough. Did you put in the parking lot? The football field parking lot anywhere. So go go to the large projects. This is the second part of that. You go to that. So this, these are our large projects that we have that we've talked about. The ones in red are somewhere on the plan. Okay. The ones in black aren't on there yet which is concerning because there's a lot of big numbers in black. So the parking lot was budgeted for when, when you guys put these, when, when you guys fill these up to Mr. McKinnon, are, are you giving him what you would think is your number one or your number two? How, how is this list being developed from the street? Sorry. Sorry. I just want to make sure that we have the open communication because when we come back to make a decision, um, you know, I'm going to have a hard time paying money for a parking lot if I got water leaking in Central Elementary. Um, that, you know, parking lot, eh, it's hard sell on how that improves the educational process. Kids playing basketball and water, yeah, it's pretty tough. So, how much input are you guys having to this? Parking lot. 
it's fun. Right from their minds. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at it, but we didn't. We didn't. We didn't create this. No, no, no. I would. I would just like to make sure that the communication from with you guys are the subject matter experts in your building. That Mr. McCann has a prioritized list of what you think is going on, so that when we come to that, because I don't want to be in. The, I don't want to be dabbling in your guys' stuff. I just want to say, let's spend the money here now, because this is what Terry's most important thing is for all of us. I mean, we talk about it, but also some of the mechanical stuff, especially like, <laughs> I mean, or some of that. I mean, there's a whole section of that stuff that, yeah. like, things that and they're going to be on air compressors for the, or whatever, you know, Trent and them have, or like a roof or a boiler or whatever. Yeah. That, like, those things, I don't know what you guys think, but those things, I trust that. Right. Trust that somebody else has got to make those yeah. decisions, probably. And and I will uh, maybe help or make it worse. Um, <laughs> they also have access to a little bit of money for their educational stuff that they they don't that doesn't go on here. They just every year they get that. And I think we have a couple things on consent agenda where both Terry and Amy dipped into that for this year and for a little bit of next year to do some technology projects that they wanted to that were a priority for them. And that just started last year with Mr. Mann. That's right. the first year we've ever been allocated. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not going to say that yet. I have some kind of strong opinions about that, but we'll we'll see. So I'm just going to yeah. appreciate your support and yeah. figuring it out and giving us an honest assessment because I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we all sat and talked with Mr. McKim individually about like, our list and looking at that and you know there's definitely some things probably that you would see on there that are would we would really love to have that are do you have to have them right now no um but yeah well and or things that they might like i think well, i think you have to do it anyway i can't see that far away <laughs> but like my there's my steps around my building are kind of getting cracked properly because but not everybody would even know that. So that was something that I think we just recently added. Like, they don't need it right now, but like, here in the next couple of years, we're going to need to replace the concrete because they're starting to crack the crumple. And those kinds of things that happen in parking lots, yeah. you know, that other people it's don't all all the all the, all the things, yeah, that they have people that are used to clean them. These are all the here. Not even the same. <laughs> Yeah. And there's the one yeah. value. Yeah. I would guess that if you were to ask him what was most important to me in my building, then it should be a W. Right. No, that's just public. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, my clocks and my oh, yes. uh, and bell system. system because it's outdated and there's only one person who can update them anymore. But I mean, he knows that and, and, and he does his best. I mean, I feel he does his best to figure out within the system as a whole how do we prioritize what needs to, to be. And I completely understand one of the buildings. A lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot a of lot stuff. Of things. Yeah. He, 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 he can talk to me and he understands what my needs are and, and why. You're, you're supposed to be the, he's supposed to be the unbiased person right. that right. weighs I all the that. needs. Yes. Yeah. Which we all have biases. That's just right. right. The way it is. But. And the securities. I've talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. and obviously be. So we, and those numbers are on there, right. and and I have a little bit of time. I'll talk about it. But um, as far as how much of an update you want on those, but uh, yeah, we have some decisions to make too. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited. I mean, we asked. Well, we told our constituents that we're going up to eight mills about nine months ago, and I want to make sure that, you know, this is what we need to be able to make the decisions of how we're going to wisely use the money um, and, uh, you know, get after it. So spend the money that we can and do it responsibly. 
I'll send those out um, so you can you can dilly dally with them or, or you know dive into them a little bit more if you want to. Thank you. Um, superintendent reports. Yes, yeah. correct. The uh, safe and secure entrances. Um, Dan Cross from DVN met with Brad at the middle school and met with Amy at West Elementary and kind of just walked through um, their thoughts and ideas and then put together um, the plan. How much did, I mean, Grayson from Olson came and, and talked with us through on a, we had a capital outlay evening. We could have Dan come in and he would walk us through that. Is that something the board wants to see, or they just like it sent? Like I could send you all the plans. We could talk through it at a board meeting. Well, how do you want that information given to you? So I think the first thing I want is buy-in from the building leadership. Does that does that make sense? Is that what you guys want? Is that you feel comfortable with it, or? I don't want you guys to feel that we're pushing an easy button with anything we do with your buildings. I want it to make sense. I want it to be user friendly. I want it to be what you guys want. You're the ones that are there every day. That's what I would really like to have that thumbs up from you guys as we're going through this process. Um, that's, that, that's what I mean. Does it make sense? Is it safe? Does the team in those buildings support that plan? Get it done. Middle school actually came out of the doorway. I mean, that were going to be easier, but uh, it makes the most sense when we explain some of the stuff to make the first center at the doorway to make the office staff. Did you have to call away without having to have another office staff person buzzing out? You know, hard to do. Hard to do. It won't work. So was the final plan for your office staff to move into the I think ours makes sense based on just the way our design of our building is. Um, to be completely transparent, we haven't talked about it as a building, like our building team hasn't talked about it at all. I think maybe that I, that's maybe a little premature, like unless we know we're really going to go in that direction. I think mean, now that we're talking about secure entrances and what we could do and stuff, but, you know, I also don't want to get people all fired up. Oh, yeah, we're going to get all these things. And then if that doesn't happen, you know what I mean? So they, they know that the, they obviously know that the board is concerned about safety and security and wanting to look at ways they can make that better in our, in our buildings. So. I thought, I mean, I thought ours would probably be obviously the easiest to do. It's amazing how extensive such things are. I guess the question I have is when we approve, and I don't know, you know, how much money and all we have to spend, but starting it over the summer, is that a possibility? So we haven't approved it yet. Right. That's what I'm saying is yeah. once we approve, I mean, is, are they still backlogged before we can get a you know? Yeah, I, I, I'd have to ask, I'd have to ask Dan about where they are and if, it, if it's Olson or whoever they're working with or how they're getting bid. I don't know what the backlog of construction projects is. Right. Um, I would be at this point in being in May, I would be a little surprised if they could get to it. The next couple of months. I, I really would. I would too. Well, I think maybe if you send us an overview and then have him come so we could ask questions, if we had questions, that might be the easiest way to go about it. <clears throat> and that way, too. And also, if the admins even had questions about their building, you know, when he presented, they could ask too. You know, kind of... okay. I'll send, send that out in a, a recap so you can click on it and uh, look through it. Then. I'll ask Dan if he can come either for this next meeting in June or July, depending on what he has going on to do. Keep in mind, they also, uh, the government is sending out, they're having several grants about hardening our exteriors. 
years. So um, I don't know that there's anything active right now, but uh, constantly watching for that. So we're going to we have it in. it's yeah. good to have numbers yeah. because yeah. then we can, you know, go a little quicker on those grants. <laughs> I've not seen one that pays for the entire thing. It's usually like for some of the yeah, match or something. Mm -hmm. no. cool. But that one, no, no. Yeah. The state didn't allocate a lot of money for that, uh, considering the number of school districts there are. But I, I think I think it was. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that will that'll go quickly. And the, and he is still Dan is still working on the high school. Uh, and work. I, Asked him about it. He goes, Man, "You are a tough boss." I said, "Well, I'm just." Not. He said, "That is going to be involved. Involved. There's no easy answer for that. So they're still working on high school." I think I'm almost trying to figure out plan, right? We haven't paid him anything for high school. No. Yeah, the other we did pay him for the other two, but. Okay. Uh, uh, end of your breakfast, May 24, 7.30 to 8.40. What time is your PD Scott that day? Do you remember? Starts at, nine. Starts at 9, so we could go to 8.45. But, um, and it, in the consent agenda, you saw a whole bunch of our businesses donating either gifts or, or I guess probably not the right word, items, trinkets, money to, to do for our staff and, and to put some things together for them. As always, the Wamigo community steps up and, and provides and, and wants to be a part of what we do in school. So we want to thank them, uh, but also want to invite you guys to be there. And so uh, just give me a heads up. If you... And you have retirement coming up too, Barty, right? So we have two things. That's that's a good point. We have retirement here on the 14th. Seven, no, 7? 17. 17. I was like, wow, we missed it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 17 here just for our retirees. And then well, that's after school, right? That's after school, 3 30 to 5 30. Come and go. Come and go, guys. Yeah, right. We'll have a little booth set up for each one of them and give them a chance to have family and stuff here. And then uh, end of your breakfast, we honor a lot. Of people, whether it be a five year or 15 year or 25 year, um, and just thank everyone for their work this year. Uh, all the people that grind, they're grinding hard now too, but they've been grinding all year long. And, and Can great lower gym, lower gym, yes, lower gym at high school. You don't have to let me know now, but if you are going to be there, give me a heads up. Yeah. Next on my list is budget spending progress. Um, Catherine and I looked at this today. Okay, would be the word that I would use at this point. So we're talking about gin fund, cap outlay. You saw a little bit of that. Um, the, the two big ones are gin fund and LOB. And um, with two months left, we're okay. Catherine, am I, am I wrong to use that word? We don't have a ton of stuff. We're like, whoa, we're not in, in the chips. We're also not uh, barely making it too. So we're just okay. Most of our expenditures, like all our building budgets have been spent because we said that by April 6th. And so those things have been taken care of. You still have a lot in May, you sell a lot in June and out of your gen funds. Um, and some of your LB, some of your at risk is where your salary still come out. So those will still take a shot. But as far as projections, we're okay. Um, I would love to see much more there, but I have to remind myself that being okay is sometimes okay. So um, personnel, if you probably looked on the personnel and saw a bunch of folks on there and in my career as an educator educators move later and later in the school year it seems like every year and so it's not a surprise to me to see the openings that we do have it still makes me and i think those folks behind me not breathe as easily when we have openings 
And so um, there may be something in the next two weeks where we need to get someone on board fairly quickly. So we might ask for some type of meeting. Zoom is, is fine where we're just approve a personnel report so that that gives them an opportunity to, to have some, well, whoever we're bringing in, we're not going to have a personnel report to take someone's resignation, but we will to hire someone in. So um, hopefully that will be something that we work with leadership on and might need to have that as we go through. And then lastly for me is, uh, I have these, I'll give them to you as uh, these are board recruitment or board member recruitment flyers. So you might use one of those or send people to me. I'll give them one as well. On it, it has, <laughs> yeah, you want to pass one to Jolene. <laughs> we'll give her several, um, but not to give out the yourself. But on it, it has, this was Claudia's recommendation. You can click on the application um, for the city, or no, sorry, for the county. Workshop. Yeah, because the you know that site's just not active. I had someone who was interested in writing for my position, and they said when they went to the site, it was so confusing. So I was like, I, I asked Rob, can we have a way to make it on our end, make it but at least they could find it and mm -hmm. not have to hunt and peck through right. the selection side because you have to go to the county and then you have to find the clerk and then you have to find the elections and then you, <laughs> it, yeah. it's it's quite quite the process. So. And, and I, we have five positions that are going to run. Is that the way to say that? Up for the, up for election. election. Thank yeah. you. Five positions that are for election. And I'm not running, so <laughs> Claudia has told me. So anyone can run because it's at large. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just want to get the word out. Uh, so I'll give you these before you leave today. Julie, the meeting that you had last week, I thought went really well, but if you have a list of those parents, I would love to have it and reach out to them. So I think they brought up some really good stuff. I'd like to be able to shoot them off an email and recommend, just let them know. Yep. I, I could, this is also comes in, in PDF form. Yeah. Would you want our principals to send it to all of their site council members? Yeah, if you would. I just, I haven't heard much buzz. I'm glad Claudia has, but I haven't heard much buzz. And I, June 1st is coming very quick. It is, it is. And I've heard, but you know, Cheryl, hearing doesn't mean action. So the more we put put that out there, I think the more likely someone will step up and do that. So, and site council members are your active, usually the parents that are paying attention and a little more active. So not always, but. That's mine. I'm on the school board because of Amy and her her uh, <laughs> her site council. I'm going to give her a plug right now. It was you saying, "Hey, as a site council member, you should go to a school board meeting, and you shouldn't be afraid to go, and you should pay attention to what's happened up on this stuff." And it was a long time ago, it was, girl. But <laughs> but it's what made me realize that this is here and what it's for, and it it started my journey. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so 14 board business, um, probably the, uh, I, I don't know, put you on the spot, Scott, but it, for what you can speak about um, with the recordings and everything, we've done a lot of different evacs, um, evacuation drills at all of the buildings. Um, would like to hear, you know, how those go, what, what you can tell us, obviously, um, because there is some a security risk there with our planning, but Anything that you can talk to us about some of those, how they've been going, what, where we need to improve that, we definitely appreciate hearing that. Yep. Um, one of the efforts that we try to make this year is really increase our, our uh, partnership with our first responders. So um, we've, uh, we've asked them to be in our buildings with, for these evacuation drills, for the tornado drills, for the fire drills, everything. And so the more they can get in there and see how we're doing things and and give us some feedback from their perspective, um, that helps us. And so they've had uh, several of them. The other day we had Sheriff Department and um, local police department there with us. Um, I saw the fire chief there. So that is that has helped us and um, I hope we can continue those partnerships. Um, we each, each 
each time we do that, we afterwards we do an after action review with with the first responders and um, talk about anything that we saw that might need to be you know talked about or like shored up for the next time. Um, we did that both at the high school and at West the other day for it. Can we go into more specific things than that? Or Hell, it just sounds like you're on it, so that's good. No, no it's really the principles that are because I mean, they they have to have a plan, and you know the plan is not going to go uh, probably as planned when it happens. But the more we can talk about it and at least have some idea of the way it should be done, um, helps us in a real situation. Um, My not. evacuation drill was actually a real. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it turned out being not a real situation, but we all thought it was. So it was fantastic because <laughs> the fire department and everything. We had a preschooler, not a verbal preschooler, full of fire. Oh, oh. that's always go. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we evacuated and it was great, but we did. I mean, again, it was not planned, but we counted it as a good answer <laughs> because we did it. <laughs> Another thing those drills do is help us, especially when we're going to another site, make sure that we're talking with the other site that, okay, we've got the keys to be able to access them. We have, you know, we have things in place so we know what to do and how to, how to get those buildings and things. So. Are the substitutes informed? I mean, do they, if they encountered something as a substitute, would you feel like comfortable and that they would know what to do and know what your expectations are? Yeah, but probably not as well as they could be just because, and probably not all it's of them. Yes, but yeah, right. I mean, like our regulars, yes, right. But you get new subs in kind of frequently. We are going to be bringing on a standard response protocol, and that is we'll put that out to the protocol for it. We'll put it out to all the buildings, the even parents, everybody, and it's a standard like. You know, if the drill is, or if the thing is this, if it's an evacuation and it's this particular thing, then here are the steps. Now, we're not going to go into the details of it, right. but here are the general ideas. And so that will help subs and anybody in our building know that if this is the thing, then these are the, here's what's going to happen. That's what that means for us. The kids will tell them. Yeah. say, especially if they like it to West, the kids are going to have a better yeah. idea than subs. <laughs> I was extremely pleased with how um, our elementary and our high school kids did it on the drill. That was they they took it seriously. They didn't you know mess around and, and, and try to escape and run and all that. <laughs> they took care of business the way they were supposed to. So they really did a great job. They take those things seriously. I mean, whether it's fire, tornado, or evacuation, I feel like it gets really good. The final thing I'll note is we have accountability procedures in place that I'm not going to go into the details of, but to make sure that, you know, and it's multiple layers of accountability so that the building is, we're not leaving anybody behind, that we know where all the kids and the staff are. So, thank you. So that was one of the topics that we talked about. Does anybody else want to bring up anything for this evening that might not be on the agenda that we can talk about? Any issues, concerns? All right. Um, with that, uh, we can. Uh, I've got. The clock changed on me. I've got eight twenty nine. Let's go tell. Uh, we have a break. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> let's do uh, let's do a break until eight forty. <clears throat> Wait ten minutes. And then we'll come back and go with the next session. Thank you. Ten minutes. And it's nice. <laughs>
Okay. Give me the second one. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I make a motion to go into executive session to discuss classified positions and salaries using the non elected personnel exemption under KOMA to invite Mr. McKim and Mr. Graber into executive session and to resume the open meeting in the boardroom at 8.58. I second. All in favor? Four.
What are we going in for now? Uh, we're going to extend for 30 minutes. Second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're extend to 9 30. And then we're going in for negotiations for until 9 15. Yeah. We invite Mr. McKinnon. And invite Mr. McKinnon. To 9 15. Mm -hmm. So you got all your personnel on Stone are done with that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mess around. Okay. Motion made by whom on that one? I made a motion. Thank yeah. you. Shell seconded everything. I did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard me. <laughs> <laughs>